Okay, we're back with Modern Sales, and now I'm gonna keep talking about why sales is a numbers game. So, if something is important, whether it's in life or in anything that happens out there, it gets tracked, think about it. So, are you tracking your performance? Do you do that today? Well, I recommend you start, obviously. I've got a couple of examples outside of sales that I'm gonna give you about the importance of tracking. First thing is sports. Sports all, are all over the place. Whatever it is that you currently watch or have heard about, if you really pay attention, you'll notice that there's, there's uh, stats for everything. So here's an example. Let's say you take baseball. In baseball, each individual player has maybe 100 different types of stats that they can be looking at. One of them specifically could be their batting average. And their batting average means how often when they get up at bat to hit the ball, are they able to get on base? A lot of times this is based, it looks like it's a, it's a three digit percentage. So the highest one that you may ever see is 400% batting average. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is that specific player out of a thousand at bats, a thousand times they get to the plate, they get on base 400 times. And that's considered to be hall of fame, the best ever of a stat. But what does that actually mean? Well, that means that out of a thousand times, 600 times they don't get on base. So another way you can look at that is four out of 10 times they get on base and six out of 10 times they don't. Well, that's so important because what that tells statistically is that this one player has got a four out of 10 shot every time they get to bat to get on base. And if you are an owner or if you're a manager of the team, you know that this person is gonna help you a certain amount of times. And the better their skills are, the better results they're gonna have. That's just one example for one sport, but there's so many different stats that everyone tracks all over the place. What about if you're not a big, if you're not big into sports, what about something like cooking? Are there stats in cooking? Absolutely. It's recipes. So think about a recipe. Every single one's got down to the ounce or down to the finite detail what uh, you need to put inside of that meal in order for it to come out the way you'd expect. It's statistics. And if you mess something up, you put a little too much of one thing in there or not enough of it, something else, it could ruin the whole batch, right? So the better, the best um, cooks out there, they've got those, the, those uh, numbers and details down very well. And they're able to predict on how to create bigger batches and better meals and know how to, everything flows together. Same thing works in sales. If you understand the, the numbers and the stats and how to apply it in your sales game, you can have incredible results. But the key thing here is you've got to start tracking it, right? So I'm going to give you now the equation that should be your overarching equation that you use every single day when you think about how to be successful. It's very simple. Activities plus skill sets equal your results. So what does this mean? Activities. Think of activities as the amount of times you're in front of a customer or the amount of times you're trying to get a customer. And that could involve a lot, a lot of different things. It can involve emailing or cold calling in the field or phone, making phone calls to try to set up appointments with customers. Whatever that process is for you to go and find a customer, that's, that's activity. That's the amount of things you do to try to get a prospect. Now, your skills. Your skills, if you're a brand new person or someone that's really tenured, been doing it forever, your skill level on each of those little acti mini activities you do in the sales process could vary. And the better you are at some of these things, the better your results are gonna be. But no matter what, activity is always a category that needs to be worked on and same with skill sets. So question for you, do you know what your average sale is for your business? Whatever it is that you sell, maybe it's something that's small or something that's large, Maybe it's a $50 transaction is your average. Maybe it's a $10,000 sale is your, trend, is your average. Maybe it's a whatever, somewhere in between. Do you know what that is? Have you figured it out? Maybe your, your industry has a general number that you could start off of. Instead of knowing what yours is, that could be a good place for you to start. That's your first question that you should probably find out. Second one is, do you know how much on average you earn on a sale? So typical customer comes in, if you just look at them all, you say, someone bought something from you, how much are you gonna make? Do you know what that is? That's really important as well for you to know the sales number, numbers game. So let's work backwards, okay? So I'm gonna teach you how to do this. Let's, go, let's do it together. 
So let's say you want to make $100,000 in commissions or whatever that is, you know, for you. It's a large number. Um, let's say 100,000 is what we're starting with. And uh, you get paid 45,000 as a base or whatever you, your company has it set up for you to be making less commission. So if you want to make $100,000 and you are paid $45,000 a year, then that means if you subtract the two, you really need to earn $55,000 this year in commissions if you want to make $100,000, right? So if you've got 12 months to earn that, 12 months in the calendar, that means that you're going to need to earn $4,600 in commissions per month. $4,600 times 12 equals roughly $55,000 a year. So if you know that your average sale that you make, how much you earn, is $250 per sale, then that means taking $250 into uh, $4,600, that means you need 18 sales per month. Now this is just a rough number, right? Yours is gonna be different, but you gotta figure out that, what that is. So 18 sales per month, okay, you got a starting point. Now, what is your closing ratio? How many customers do you need to meet with in order to get one sale? Do you know that? Let's say you close 30% of all customers that you meet, that you have a first appointment with. That means that you need 60 meetings or three meetings a month considering you work Monday through Friday in order to get to that 18 sales per month. Well, no matter what part of the process it is, you need to understand your ratios and how to influence them. So let's take a look at a couple different parts of the sales process that we're gonna be diving into a little bit further in these videos. The first part of the sales process is really your research and creating a list. If you don't have a list to start from, it's very difficult for you to do any other part of the process. But that's the first thing. The second part of the process is prospecting them on foot or in the field or prospecting over the phone. Because no matter what, whatever way you prospect in your business, something's got to yield that next step, that first appointment. So the first appointment is the next part of the process. And things that you do on that are critical. Um, if you do a great job, sometimes in some industries, there's a next step that isn't the proposal. So you go from the first appointment to the next step. And there's things that you do on there that you have to do in order to continue the process. From there, you get to the proposal, which everybody wants to get to because that means you're actually involved in a sale and you could make some money in the end. So there's things that you do during the, during the proposal to make sure that you can have a win in the end, right? So there's numbers you can track. And then finally, if you do everything right, handle objections and negotiate and, and close for the next step throughout the whole process, then you get a deal. Right, so um, in these videos, in these videos in the next series that you see here, um, I'm gonna go through three things in each video. We're really gonna break down the, your sales process and some of these are gonna apply to your industry and some of them you, you can skip depending on what you sell. But it's the, it's the general sales process. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is what happens in that part of the process on a typical basis. The second thing I'm gonna talk about is what could get in the way of success. Okay, what could happen to cause you to not move that process forward? Because in the end of the day, you want it to move forward to a deal, right? And the last thing I'm gonna talk about in each video is gonna be how do, where and how do you apply the numbers game formula for you? So if you know what that is, then you know what to focus on, you know what skills to improve for yourself, all so you can have better results and so you can make more money. So let's get started.